This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash ev9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Join me, 48 Hours correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Aaron Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Your picks have been horrible, man. It's the point. It's the point of the show. Isn't Isn't it? it? Isn't it? it? It's possible. I don't understand what this podcast is about. Poppycock. It's a fuckhouse. On a weekly basis, we are consuming more concentrated bad movies than probably anybody in the history of mankind. Poppycock. What story? (laughs) What story? (laughs) What are you talking about? Do you want lunch? I have yet to laugh in this movie. I'll just tell you that. You picked it, motherfucker. (laughs) Just remember that. You know the problem with Hollywood is they make shit unbelievable, unremarkable shit. So I was legitimately offended. You were I offended. Was a, I was offended. I didn't know you could get offended. I was offended. This did it. If I were gay, I wouldn't be offended. <laughs> They're fucking making shit up, I mean. Inconsequential detail after inconsequential yeah. detail after inconsequential detail. Please don't lie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm Here holding a mic in my hands and now I'm talking yeah. all the okay. <laughs> Welcome to Cinephobe, the podcast where we break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper. That's Amin Al Hassan. That's Anthony Mays. Just a reminder off the top, if you're submitting a Cinephobe uh, possibility, it's got to be 40% or less on Rotten Tomatoes, either as a audience score or a critic score, preferably. Don't send us something that has a 61% for both. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> if you're curious, does this qualify? Just look it up. Yeah, we don't have a special like meter that we hold it up to and like yeah. oh, nope, 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 I'm getting a rating. <laughs> right. And the one time we made an exception was for an April Fool's joke with the great Adnan Burke. Yes. So it's the only time we've done one over. If there's a movie that's like forty one percent, buy some bots, spam the hell out of that thing, get the reviews lower. This week on Cinephobe, we watched the twenty ten comedy Cop Out. Oh man, Cop Out. I forgot how long this movie is. Very long. Very long movie. I'm trying to figure out why. Why is it that long? I don't know because there were various points in this movie where I was like, shit, there's an hour left. Shit, there's 45 minutes left. I felt like I've been watching a long time. It's a long hour, 47 minutes. It's also uh, one of the rare movies that has a pun title, but it never makes it good on the pun. We'll get to that. the reason for that pun title later. I mean, there there is a reason for it. Oh no! You, you've teased this in the chat. Oh yeah, <laughs> the trivia for this. Oh movie man! Is. Oh the tri- so the movie's gonna be whatever. I remember enjoying this movie when I watched it. I hadn't you watched it in a what? long time. Enjoying this movie. <laughs> I'm all in on Tracy Morgan. I love Tracy Morgan. He's hilarious to me. I know you feel differently. This may be, this may be a reverse to America situation, Maze. A double negative. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Cop Out stars Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan. Bruce coming off of uh, Surrogates, and he was about to be in Red in the same year. Tracy was in the midst of uh, 30 Rock. He'd be a voice in the movie Rio in 2011. We also get Guillermo Diaz from Half-Baked and Scandal, Sean William Scott from the American Pie franchise. We get Adam Brody from The O.C. and Jennifer's Body, Kevin Pollack from The Usual Suspects and A Few Good Men, Michelle Trachtenberg from Eurotrip and Gossip Girl. And what was that? That's what was who that? she was. Alex <laughs> Mack or whatever. Is that who she I is? Was... No, she was Harriet the Spy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
I kept looking at her and I'm like, yo, she's way too recognizable to play a daughter. I mean, that's, 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 she's from Euro Trip. Yeah. Wait, did you just now know that when I said it? Yeah, I didn't look you it up. You never I, thought to look it up? No, I just didn't feel like it. Just like the dude who was Kevin Pollock's partner for the first, like... Oh, Adam Brody, yeah. First, like, maybe 15 scenes he's in, I kept writing Teddy from Westworld. Oh, okay. <laughs> Baby James Marsden. <laughs> Jewish James Marsden. Yeah, I feel like he's if James Marsden could act. Ooh, I don't, th- really? I don't think James Marsden's wow. a good actor. Okay, I don't think on. he is. You're not no, going to talk bad about Teddy from Westworld, man. Oh, man. He put his life on the line for Dolores. Did he? He did. I'm more surprised you're saying Adam Brody can act. Compared to James Marsden. I believe Ooh, so. Sounds like an act off. We also get Rashida Jones, Jason Lee, and Fred Armisen in this one. And Susie. Oh, and Susie Green. Yeah, Susie, from yeah, Curve. Susie. Susie yeah. Essman, the great. You know, I know she's Susie Green, by the way. What? Because she didn't play any other character in that movie. She played no, Susie Green. She, so she played that's... Susie Green. I was waiting for Jeff Garland to walk through that yeah, door. Exactly. And for her to yell at, at Jeff and call him a fat fuck. Right. You let, you let a burglar in our house, you fat fuck. This movie is directed by Kevin Smith. He had just done yes. Zack and Mary make a porno two years that earlier. Kevin. Very influential on him. <laughs> he had Red State coming out in 2011. Maze, what's the crazy fact about Kevin Smith's grossing movies here? So it's the only movie he hasn't written that he directed, but it's also his highest grossing movie ever. That is stunning. Okay. Cop Out was written by Rob and Mark Cullen. The, the Cullen, Cullen brothers. brothers. Yeah, the Cullen <laughs> brothers uh, have written some episodes of TV, including Las Vegas and an animated Kelsey Grammer vehicle called Gary the Rat. Very apparent. <laughs> I think it's their only movie. The synopsis for Cop Out. Jimmy's rare baseball card is robbed. It's only hope to pay for his daughter's upcoming wedding. He recruits his cop partner, Paul, to track down the robber, a memorabilia-obsessed gangster. A lot of info is there. He, I mean... Uh, he likes baseball. Yeah. Memorabilia-obsessed makes it seem like he's out here acquiring, like, Muhammad Ali right. trunks and stuff like that. And that's definitely not what's happening. He's in just fact, a huge baseball fan. Yeah, and the only memorabilia he actually acquires in the movie is the baseball card, which yeah. was a whole – it almost oh, – just, yeah, keep going. All uh, right. We'll get to it. <laughs> Tagline, rock out with your Glock out, I mean. Whoa. I added the I mean part. That's not in there. Rock out with your Glock out. You like that? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, $30 million estimated budget. It grossed $44 million U.S., $55 million worldwide. That's a certified hit. So none of Kevin Smith's movies have made more than $50 million? That's crazy. Just That's to what? remind you what Kevin Smith has made. He's made Clerks. He's made Chasing Amy. He's made Dogma. Zach and Miri make a porno. There you go. Yeah, I, I actually like, thought I like that, that would have at least done that, right? I thought Jay and Silent Bob was the one that was going to make a lot of money. But like, that, even that's like, I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of big budget. Yeah, we're not talking about profits here. We're talking about yeah. growth. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm t- trying to factor in movies that would like get marketed. Because well, like Clerks no, and Mall Rats were never Jay, going. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back was heavily marketed. That had a big budget. So did Dogma. Dogma yeah, had a yes. big marketing budget. Zach and, and Mary make a porno, $42 million worldwide. I think it's just because his movies are so cheap. So Dogma made 44, but it was a $10 million budget. Yeah, he makes money. He gets a lot of high caliber stars to be in his movie for nothing, and he makes it for nothing. Clerks 2, $5 million budget, $27 million box office. What about Death to Smoochie? That wasn't him. <laughs> that wasn't him? Yeah, it well, was. What if it had been? What if it had Hold been? On. Death to Smoochie isn't him? No. Does it just, it just uses his characters? Are you mixing up Smoochie and Mooby? Yeah, that's what I am. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was the same universe, the fast food character. Oh, gotcha. Right? Death to Smoochie, big time flop. $50 million budget, $8.3 million worldwide. I just feel like Kevin Smith is such a ubiquitous filmmaker. So many people have seen his movies. It must all just be rentals and video cassettes and all that. Before listening to the rest of this podcast, Cop Out is available on Netflix. Let's get to the Rotten Tomatoes reviews. Cop Out receives an 18% from critics on 159 reviews. Audience gives it 40% 
on over 489,000 ratings. Fucking sheep. Bruce Willis Hive? It might be a Bruce Willis Hive. I've heard they're out there. They are out there. Absolutely. Positive or negative reviews, I mean. You know me, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, so give me the negative reviews because I fucking hated this movie. Wow! Spoiler alert. All right. Negative reviews. Nigel Floyd of Time Out. A pitifully unfunny homage to 80s action comedies. Is it? There's a lot of that throughout saying, oh, this was supposed to be an ode to 80s comedies, a nod to 80s you know, cop comedies, buddy cop comedies. All There's a lot of that throughout. I just didn't get that feeling. And I also think if you're if you're judging this against like a lethal weapon or something, I think you went in with the wrong expectations. Oh, I'm, I'm not even I'm uh, Tango and Cash. It's not even that. And Tango and Cash is a future Tango and Cash is a phenomenal movie. It's way. it's on it's on the list. Five. Uh, but <laughs> I'll tell you right now, <laughs> put me down for a file. <laughs> Laramie Legal of film.com. Joyless, pointless, humorless. That's not right. That's absolutely accurate. Thank you. Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I like that. Mary F. Poles of MSN Movies. It just wants to remind audiences of something they've enjoyed before, like looking at an old photo album. What did they enjoy before? I, again, it's, I, we're, it's like a buddy cop comedy theme oh, for a lot of these reviews. I know. I mean, the trope's been beaten to death. Sure. I mean, there's the very explicit references to stuff, which I've tried my hardest to list out because it was exhausting. But there's probably some more subtle sure. allusions to things. But it's just it doesn't play because it's a very tired genre. Well, let's let's hold off on that analysis. Uh, Richard Roper of RichardRoper.com, an unholy mess. Chris Wagner yes. of Dallas Morning News. Cop Out is like a parody of a parody of a parody so derivative and desperate in its pleas for laughter that it's hard to tell when it's making fun of itself and when it's simply run out of ideas. Again, I didn't get that feel from it. I agree. I mean, these reviews are wrong. Moira McDonald of Seattle Times. It's about as much fun as Flying Coach and, if you're seated next to Smith anyway, a lot less interesting. Didn't he get kicked? Is that a reference? Yeah, wow. that's a topical oh, reference. Low blow. For, for being fat, right? Low blow. Yeah, that low was rude, blow. Moira. Yeah. I expected better from you. Film directors, Kevin Smith, thrown off Southwest Plane yeah, Southwest for Flight. being too oh, big oh, for seat. seats. Seats yeah, and coach class because it's Southwest. They don't have anything else. Yeah. But by the way, I fucking hate Southwest. <laughs> Unless they want to sponsor. In which case, I love Southwest. Unless you're a sponsor, because we know times are tough right now, Southwest. That was super topical. It was February 2010. Peter Howell of Toronto Star, repeat reviewer. This pitiful excuse for entertainment is utterly bereft of wit, intelligence, or craft on any level. The only thing left to screw up would have been to leave the lens cap on the camera. Wait, that would have been an improvement. I'm with you. I'm with that's my that's my guy right there. Really, Peter Howell, who you've hated this whole time, and now he's he's won me back over. <laughs> Rex Reed of Observer, last negative review: The Willis Morgan team is about as on point as four legs with the ankles missing. The sequel will undoubtedly star Adam Sandler and Chris Tucker. It's harsh. I don't know why Chris Tucker got got thrown under the bus there. All right, like positive. Adam Sandler and other bad black comedian would have been much better. Who, who, who's, Kevin Hart? Who's a, Kevin Hart was no, big at the time, I guess. No, it wouldn't be Kevin Hart. It would have been like Martin Lawrence. Oh, wow. I agree. All right, positive see. reviews. Prairie Miller of Newsblaze. Willis and Morgan are a devilishly <laughs> delightful. <laughs> Can I just imagine what Adam Sandler and Martin Lawrence would have been like? Oh, Jimmy, why are you doing it like that? I don't know. I didn't even think of Oh, Jimmy. Oh, Deborah, Deborah, cheating on me, Jimmy. Oh. Are you sure? <laughs> That's the are two you boys. sure this isn't Adam Sandler and Bill Cosby? That sounds no. like... <laughs> No, that, that's that's the Martin Lawrence. And, oh, Gina, she cheating on me. Oh, roll around on the ground. Oh, it's so funny because it's physical humor. Prairie Miller of Newsblaze. <laughs> Willis and Morgan are a devilishly delightful down and dirty detective duo as Kevin Smith releases their combo inner zany outlaws in a kind of clerks with badges. All right, already. That's Adam Sandler. Also, right. Let me throw out like to that remark right there. 
the clerks with badges. Have you ever watched fucking clerks? That person never watched clerks. That person never watched clerks. That person never fucking watched clerks. If they think this is clerks with badges. To be fair, Kevin Smith had a quote similar to that. So we might have just plagiarized the quote. Our guy, Brian Orndorff of BrianOrndorff.com. Yes, sir. <laughs> How many reviews did he submit? <laughs> we have two people, actually. The next guy coming up also submits a lot of reviews to a lot of places. Willis looks content here with punchlines and weapons, giving more of a John McClane performance here than he offered in the last Die Hard picture. Morgan goes supernova broad, but it's an appealing tornado of spastic distress. The reviews here... There's a lot of shitting on Live Free or Die Hard, by the way. I like that movie. Is that the one? I like it too. Justin Long. Timothy Oliphant and Kevin Smith. Oh, there you go. Michael A. Smith. That's another multiple reviewer, spray reviewer of Nolan's Pop Culture Review. The first great comedy of 2010. Does it come out the first week of January? (laughs) Yeah, it did come out January (laughs) January 1st. All right. You had the other guys, which is the comedy of 2010 and that's how that's you what do. this movie wanted to be right yes yes easy a love easy a love that that's with the uh, old girl emma stone from la la land emma yeah. stone yeah who's from phoenix by the way oh okay yeah that. how does she last in the phoenix sun unbelievable get him to the greek i guess she just gnashed her teeth get him greek another great comedy that's fu- yeah that's solid pretty good not as rewatchable as Forgetting Sarah Marshall or the other ones, but still good. Agreed. P. Diddy. You want to hear something funny? I watched Forgetting Sarah Marshall one time. It was during the playoffs when we played San Antonio. It was between games one and game two. We were in San Antonio for like seven days because for some reason the NBA schedule was game one for Saturday afternoon and game two for Wednesday night. And rather than fly back to Phoenix, Archie Bass has decided, let's just stay in San Antonio the whole time. And we lost game one. That was a game where Tim Duncan hit that crazy three-pointer at the top of the key. And we were heartbroken. And miserable in disgusting San Antonio between games one and game two. We went to watch Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which was a funny movie. But also during that same time, we found out that Mike D'Antonio was likely going to quit and go to New York. Everything was in shambles and we lost game two. And as a result, I have never seen Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh, man, it's an all timer. I know that's I, one of the best I, comedies I, ever. It's crazy that you've attached such negative energy to that it's, movie. <laughs> yeah, it's just it gives me bad feelings. I know. I remember watching it. I laughed my ass off. It was a great movie. Yeah, I can never go back. Wow. We also have MacGruber, Hot mm. Tub Time Machine. Great movie. I love Hot Tub Time Machine. Where does that score? Too high. It's got to be high. I fucking hate John Cusack. Do you like Hot Tub Time Machine too? Then. So I've only seen the first one, and I saw it like two months ago. The second one doesn't. That was the first time I saw it. Oh, okay. Then I like it. Then I'm in. Yeah. Hot tub time machine two qualifies. Thirteen percent. But I've never seen it. Grown ups due date. Which one was grown ups? Adam Sandler, your boy, and Kevin James. It's where he just like wanted to go camping with his friends. No. Dinner for schmucks. Well, dinner for schmucks was not as good as I thought it would be. Nah, neither was due date. No, due date's terrible. It does have a good Danny McBride scene though. It's closing time. Time to roll to Chili's and chow down with my fucking boys. Oh, Which it's one? Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh, that's that's the best one. Along with other guys. It's other guys and Scott Pilgrim for me. Yeah, I'm with you. That's a great movie. Kit Bowen of the Movie Kit. Is it a cop-out to make a throwback to the 80s buddy cop comedy instead of doing something original? Maybe, but at least it'll make you laugh out loud a few times. It's not really all that First positive. of all, it didn't. Second of all, it's not positive. Third of all... I was going to get mad at that really cheap pun until I realized it's Kit from the movie Kit. So <laughs> I kind of on brand, I guess. I got to give him credit for being consistent. Yeah. Two more. Alonzo Duralde of Queer Sighted. Whether or not it's a huge hit in its theatrical release, Cop Out will definitely become the kind of movie that will make you drop the remote when it starts popping up on cable. I would drop the remote right into my TV screen. <laughs> <laughs> and then last one, Fred Topple of Can Magazine. If it really mattered to you that Live Free or Die Hard was PG-13, here's your chance to see Bruce Willis say fuck again. <laughs> this movie really didn't need to be. It was, we had another movie earlier, remember, when I said it didn't really need to be a rated R movie. Like, a lot of it was gratuitous. They could have gotten oh, away. Yeah. It was Showgirls, which was NC-17. I said they could have pretty much edited it down and made it rated R and had the same exact movie. You don't add, you don't edit down an Esther House movie. The Showgirls thing was Verhoeven just had such a tricky history with the MPAA. He was literally battling them every movie because he was on their shit list. So that was just him like giving the middle finger essentially. I mean, what is your first note? No surprise here. My first note is 
I don't like Tracy Morgan. <laughs> We're in Brooklyn, boys. You can tell because they're playing Beastie Boys and panning to a shot of Brooklyn. Wait, Zach, are they playing Sabotage? Are they playing no. like, Beastie Boys? Have <laughs> such a rich catalog of songs. Not Maybe Paul they're playing Revere. Brass Monkey, Paul no, Revere, not Brass, yeah. uh, uh, Intergalactic. Uh, perhaps. No, That's one of the not that ones. one. No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. because they're in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. That's how I knew it was Brooklyn. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known my boroughs. Yeah. Is this Staten Island? No, <laughs> sleep till. Uh, till what? <laughs> till what? Someone tell me. Brooklyn. Oh, uh, motherfucker. We get Bruce and Tracy slow motion walking through a precinct before interrogating the suspect. Tracy informs Bruce that today is nine years of them being partners and he got him a card. Main shit stains. <laughs> Bruce doesn't celebrate anniversaries, but Tracy wants to see the expression on his face when he opens the heartfelt card. Have you guys seen this movie before? Yes. Yeah. 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 I have not seen this movie. Right there, I'm thinking, oh, man, wouldn't it be great if he's handing him, like, his transfer papers? Because I can't wait to get the fuck. Like, I'm like, oh, let it be, like, a contentious relationship. Nope. It's not that. (laughs) Oh, no. I think it's better this way. Oh, no. I I would rather they, they were button heads. They had zero chemistry. Well, yeah, we'll explain that later. Um, now, <laughs> now, now, now Tracy wants to know how they're going to interrogate this guy. Bruce Willis says, same way we always do. I interrogate him. You write it down. Tracy says, oh, you're making decisions now? I hope the whole 6 9 knows you're making decisions now. I want to play the bad guy. By the way, Bruce, their precinct, as I've discovered later, 65th precinct. Oh, there you go. Maybe you just want to say 6 9 Bruce says that all Tracy does is give lines from cop movies. Tracy says it's a homage. He says homage. He says it's French for you better let me do this. Bruce allows him to do it, and Tracy takes his badge off. Right before he walks in, Tracy Morgan walks in as he's warming up on his way in there. He has the ashiest elbows I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if that's like him in character or nobody on set to cut. Get some lotion out here. Those like, elbows look like elbow pads. He and Rashida are the only black people in the movie, right? No, the FBI guy who never talked, faces obscured in the shadows <laughs> as he uh, accepts Gabriella. Oh, okay. Also, uh, R- Rashida's gay cousin. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Also, the little kid. Bruce opens the card after Tracy leaves the room. On the front, it says, happy anniversary. Inside, sweetheart is crossed out, and he just wrote Jimmy. I thought that was funny. You think I think it's a funny little misdirection. Yeah, I love that part. The idea that he wanted to see his expression when he opens it, like there's some big heartfelt thing. And all he did was cross out the word and put his own name. No. That's great, man. That's funny. No. Fuck you. Tracy busts in the room with the suspect pretending to be someone who broke free from the cops and stole a gun. Then starts just throwing out movie lines. Al Pacino from Heat, Denzel from Training Day, Sam Jackson from A Time to Kill. How did you know what movies he was referencing? Did you have to do some crazy research to look up every line and say, okay, what movie was that from? No, it's cutting to Bruce Willis calling him out. Oh, yeah, because he's yeah he's, he's, call, he's literally calling out the title of every movie. Schindler's ever List, The Color Purple, Jaws, Beetlejuice. Jaws was the only one I laughed because he had the, the pen in his, his mouth like, like the cigarette and he put on a pair of glasses and it looked a lot like Roy Schneider and Jaws. Yeah. That was the only one I laughed. He says, yippee ki motherfucker, to which Bruce Willis says, I've never seen that movie. And he mm-hmm. delivers that. He delivers it horribly. Mm-hmm. He shouldn't have said anything. He should have just like cocked an eyebrow or something yeah. I, don't, I don't like that he says something from scarface and then looks at the two-way mirror and says scarface mm. that's the response that many of the jokes in this movie elicited from me mm. stick your tongue out and you go mm. oh it's such a funny joke man man you're in a bad mood like- uh, yeah i guess how i got there the other cops come into the room and watch. They're laughing. They're eating popcorn. Finally, the suspect says that the drugs come through his cell phone store. It's Juan Diaz doing the drop, and they set up a sting. You've just been had by white lightning and black thunder. You left out a predator quote, Planet of the apes, officer and a gentleman. They call me Mr. Tibbs. Cool hand, Luke. Gone with the wind. Batman, dirty dancing, Star Wars again. It's exhausting yeah it's a lot it was too many there's also bruce willis drawing a dick and miming shoving it in the guy's mouth yeah oh yeah and also every single line was delivered in this voice right here because i'm tracy morgan son that's his voice what do you want him to do about his voice not cast him that's what i want that scene was not great but he's good in this movie tracy's now undercover dressed as a cell phone in front of the store he's bored wants to call his wife debbie 
and the drop is happening. The suspect, the guy that they set up this thing with, gives an obvious signal to Tracy, but Tracy doesn't see it. Juan Diaz notices it, shoots the clerk with an Uzi, and then shoots up the block and misses everything. Yeah. It's so pretty amazing to miss a man in a massive cell phone foam suit. Now they're chasing him. Morgan is on foot. Bruce Willis is in the car. Tracy pushes the dude off a bicycle, takes it. Now a dog is chasing him. The dog takes him off the bike as Bruce chases down the dude on the subway. Fake ass cool, yo. There's a shootout. Uh, Juan runs out of bullets, raises his arms, and then jumps from platform to platform as a train comes. Bruce continues to chase, then gets hit by a student driver car. It's a Geo, right? Who gets hit by Geo Metro? Now they're talking to their captain. Bruce is uh, talking about how these Mexican gangs don't do anything with any class. Which felt a little Absolutely, the movie has a lot of racism flying in a lot of different directions. And not on purpose for comedic purposes. Yeah, it didn't feel like there was a purpose for it, for sure. Let's just establish that these gangs are Mexican because the girl is going to come from Mexico. Exposition, but our exposition is... Unfortunately, very racist. <laughs> they get suspended without pay for 30 days. They should have coordinated with the other detectives. Uh, Tracy stealing the bike is on YouTube, to which Tracy says, really? The YouTube? Captain, how many hits did I get? The yeah. YouTube made me laugh. Especially but then how many hits was just immediately sucked any comedy out of it? Like, they could have uh, left it at the YouTube, and it would be like, all right, that's a funny line. Bruce's daughter is getting married in six weeks, and he needs the money for the wedding, badges and guns. I always thought it would be a cool moment to just slam down badges and guns on a table. You know, if you're a cop, cop getting busted, suspended or something, badges and guns. And man, I would slam yeah. this shit around. The- sure. But the 30, the 30 day without pay is probably that's going to be tough. Yeah. By the way, 30 days without pay. That's two paychecks. That's on that's a cop's a lot, salary. Man. That's a that's lot. A, is it a lot for a cop? Is it? Is it? Is it? Because the next scene we're going to get to is. Him going and finding out that his daughter's wedding, which apparently is in six weeks, they just now are getting the tab for it. And oh, by the way, that tab, as enormous as it is, somehow two paychecks of a cop's salary would have made all the difference there. They're arguing as Pollock and uh, Brody come over to mock them. They say their months of undercover work is ruined. But as they're talking to him, Tracy calls Bruce, even though they're sitting right next to each other. They start making fun of him. You do not scramble another cop's eggs. (laughs) You ever notice Hunsucker smells like 10 Jamaican slap box in an elevator? Oh! When, when black people are, what are they calling? Like snapping on each other? What kind of jokes do they have? I feel like this was all Tracy Morgan. I, I don't uh, think these were written. Why, why do you think he's so popular? Hunsucker. His wife has three teeth and two of them are in her pocket. Oh! <sighs> she got one titty missing a nipple. <sighs> they made a movie about these two. Kevin Costner and Robert De Niro played in it. It's called The Unfuckables. <sighs> to which Brody then replies, I'm not going to lie. I like the idea of De Niro and Costner playing us in something. To which Kevin, Kevin Paul gets to use his De Niro impersonation. <sighs> Big impersonation. Guy. They signed Kevin Pollock just for that scene. 100%. He does um, do a really good De Niro. Oh, he does. He's a great impression. He makes his face look like De Niro, which is pretty imp- impressive. So I know Mangold's wife is very unhappy. She said that he's all foreskin, to which they said, that's actually really clever. Uh, it's oh, my God. Clever. I mean, you are, what is with clever. you? Oh, it's man. It's not clever. No, it's not. No, you went in with the predisposition because you don't like Tracy Morgan, and now you've decided to shit on this movie. Just like you go in thinking, oh, you picked a movie. Now it's got to be gold. Everything's funny in it. I went into Coffee and Kareem not liking it because I don't like Ed Helms. And guess what? By the end of it, it was a file. Spoiler alert. That's a future callback. <laughs> There's no spoiler. That episode that one. <laughs> Zach, remember when Amin was talking about whether he would be a good truck driver? Yeah. Amin, do you think you could live the life of a truck driver if you learned how to expertly drive a, a semi truck? I think the learning how to drive part would be the hard part. But yeah, I think I could I could be a truck driver. The lifestyle isn't hard. USA Today reports on the Walmart trucker who plowed into the limo van carrying comedian Tracy Morgan. Federal investigators blame fatigue for the crash that badly injured Morgan and killed his friend. I think we know uh, why he's so averse to it now. (laughs) That's that's just a regular callback because I think that episode's out. Yeah. We're now in a church. Po' Boy, played by Guillermo Diaz, is met by his Scarface. I only call him Scarface from Half Big, man. I think most people know him from Scandal, which is crazy. 
You no, know, I know him from, from Habit. He's Scarface. Yeah. From that. Poe Boy wants to buy a farm team with all the money they're, they're going to get from this stuff. Baseball! <laughs> Another drug dealer. A car with drugs was stolen from his guys. They shoot him, but the blood doesn't splatter. I really thought with the angle of that gunshot, Poe Boy would have been covered in blood. You forgot about the line, bless me, father, for I'm about to sin. Oh, because he has a gunshot yet. Well, he, but he didn't even kill him. He doesn't <laughs> kill anyone in this movie. Oh, he doesn't. He gets yes. everyone else to do it. Mostly Juan. Bruce and Tracy pull up to meet Bruce's daughter, his ex, and her new husband. He doesn't know how to tell them he got suspended. Tracy says he doesn't have to. Opens a glove box. There are guns and badges. What are you doing with all these badges? I lose them a lot. I like the smile on his face after he says that. I mean, if you were a cop, you think you'd be a dirty cop? I think I would. I wouldn't be a dirty cop who, like, beats up people and, and minorities or whatever, but I'm definitely, like, on the take, like, looking the other way. I think I'd feel no. pressure to hit a minority every no, once in a while. No, no, no. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be like, uh, like I wouldn't want to, but just... David <laughs> Allen Greer. Well, I know you would, but uh, no, I'd be like David <laughs> Allen Greer's character. Remember when he asked me how I could afford a Jaguar, and I said drug money. <laughs> like that's the kind of dirty cop I'd be. Yeah, well, I just feel like it'd be one of those things where, like, if you're doing the drug exchange, like you have to hit, take a hit just to oh, show you, that you're. You don't. You don't do the exchange. You just look the other way. No, 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 no. I'm saying like that would be the reason I would hit a minority if I was a cop. It would be like the, oh, I have to show that I'm I'm one of them, right? I think that – like I wouldn't want to hit a minority. I feel like I would have to like every <laughs> six months or something like a dental check. I, I like the idea of like a bunch of criminals – and Zach, oh, wait, what are you? I'm, I'm Serbian. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, what about you? Uh, Portuguese. Portuguese from where? Cape Verde? <laughs> but I'd definitely become a dirty cop after a while, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, you'd have to, I think. I'd be, you know who I'd be like? American Gangster. Josh Brolin's character. Oh, that's yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good call. All right, price of the wedding is going to be 48K. The stepdad says he'd like to pay for the wedding, even though it's modest for a dream wedding bruce wants to talk to him alone doesn't like they tried to embarrass him in front of his daughter basically they don't like each other and the money is nothing to the stepdad who's super rich tracy gets home takes the recycling out notices a empty bottle of champagne in there checks the laundry there are sheets and his wife's underwear in there he thinks she's cheating on him poison place in every road has its dawn you know other than the no sleep till brooklyn some of the music was good in this music like in terms of fitting into the scene the soundtrack was terrible Oh, but it fit, uh, it fit the, 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 tone. the Casio key, like... I think this is the first time that Kevin Smith had access to, like, a mainstream soundtrack. So he just used his main playlist, all the things he likes. We find out Bruce is going to have to sell this rare baseball card in order or, to pay for the, in order to pay for the wedding. Like, I'm trying to like, hold back a cough right now. Not a corona cough, just a regular cough. Tracy confronts Rashida Jones' his wife with the empty bottle. She says she celebrated closing the ramen account. Says she had help from Henry the Neighbor. Then he admits he's insecure. She says she, he has nothing to worry about. They make up as Henry walks by the open door outside. That's when Tracy takes a nanny cam teddy bear out and sets it up to spy on his wife. You know you got me open like a research monkey, right? I don't know what that means. They want him to be a crazy jealous type, but they're just too lazy to demonstrate that he's crazy jealous. Ah, I just make him put in a nanny cam. That comes back to play later. Sure, but like you got to establish he's crazy jealous more than that. He can't be a sweet crazy jealous. But he's a sweet guy. Exactly. That's more the reason why you make him crazy jealous. Outside, Ah. let it manifest itself. I think that works. Bruce tells Tracy about selling the baseball card to cover the wedding. It's a gem mint Andy Pathco. It's worth about $83,000. 83000 grand? <laughs> I like that. That's funny to me. 83000 grand? Good play on words there. Bruce goes inside the card shop to sell the card while Tracy stays outside to call his wife. This memorabilia guy had a little bit of moose in him. <laughs> he did have some moose in him. So thirsty to touch the Pafco. Yeah, he really did. He was he was horny for that baseball card. You out of my head and you out of my head. Two robbers bust in. They tase Bruce, steal the card, steal the cash. Bruce can't get Tracy's attention outside. Sean William Scott is one of the robbers. He takes a gun, tases him again, says it's his gun. But as he tases him, Bruce notices a tattoo. They run off, and Bruce comes outside and screams, Hey! At Tracy. Tracy says, I'm on the phone. Recovers 
mighty quickly from that second tase, I might add. I mean, he's a tough guy. It's John McClain. I don't know what you – I mean. No, I know, but the first tase had him down for quite a while. First well, tase had him down yeah, for quite a while. Yeah, but then he's used to it at that point, you know? You punch in the face, the next punch doesn't hurt as bad. No? Mangold and Hunsucker get the witness testimony from Bruce in a mocking way. He won't give them any of the information, though, about the tattoo. Now Bruce and Tracy are investigating recent robberies. They figure out where he got the tattoo. They're staking out a beach house of where the next robbery could be. Tracy is telling Bruce about the neighbor and his wife, and it's an imaginary scene of them taking their trash out at the same time every morning. Tracy is speaking in a terrible British accent every time he's Henry the neighbor, enticing her with sexual innuendos and motions. She's intrigued. And he says, while he's putting his life on the line, I can dicky do you from behind. To which Bruce Willis says, dicky do? And then Tracy says, monocle wearing motherfucker. And the guy turns around the imaginary scene and has a monocle for no reason. I fucking love that. That part makes me laugh every single time. Rhythm is a dancer is a banger also. Absolutely. The monocle's so funny. The monocle made me laugh in the same way as when we watched Hot Rod. The dude coming out with the... A cooked goose for everyone! Mostly because it was unexpected. Wow, that's a cinephobe first, a fond Hot Rod memory. No, I, I, <laughs> I, mentioned, I mentioned it in the Hot, in the hot Rod review. Don't worry, he's going to call you a kid fucker soon enough, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> ruin the moment. Every time I see this movie and he says monocle wearing motherfucker, and he turns around with a monocle in his bathroom. Like, I just laugh every... I laugh out loud every time. Well... I don't think that's going to be a problem for me. Bruce won't let Tracy call his wife. He pushes his head in the sand, and now they notice Stifler on the roof doing parkour to break into the house. Then they see him taking a shit in the house. Tracy says he won't shit unless he's at home. Parkour, that's a French martial art to get you around and over stuff. And Bruce says, what are you, Wikipedia? That's a timely reference. Mm. That's a good reference at the time. That's a good mm. reference at the time. You can't like the YouTube reference and not like the Wikipedia reference. Mm. Mom and the kid come home while Stifler is robbing them. Tracy and Bruce stop them from going in, and it's Susie Green. She won't follow her instructions. She pulls out a hand cannon, really a giant gun, but won't swear in front of her kid. I thought that was funny. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I that's love great. That so much. I'm not going anywhere. Someone's in my house. I'm going to go take care of the son of a bit B myself. Oh, oh, man. Put that gun on the deck right now. No, F that. I'm not going anywhere. I'm telling you, somebody's stealing my stuff. I've worked too GT hard. You gonna smoke somebody? F and A, right I am. Ma'am, just please put the gun down. No effing way. I know my rights. Lady, put the effing gun down on the ground right now. Take your son across the effing street to your effing neighbor's house and stay there until we come and get you. Jesus, see. You better not screw up any of my furniture. It's custom made Italian. It's funny, but I'm also thinking like, uh, uh, it's funny because I'm watching. Susie from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Well, yeah, but that's the point. But Curb is improv, and Susie's just making that shit up, period. That's just how she does it. Sure, but again, that's it's like if Leon was the guy that walked up. Yeah, that's how I feel whenever J.B. Smoove is in any of these That's how I felt when J.B. Smoove was in Hall Pass. No, yeah, It's always no, Leon to me. No. Bruce goes off on her without swearing, gets her to wait at the neighbor's house. They're searching the house. Stifler drops down from the ceiling onto Tracy. As Bruce hears it, he falls down the stairs to get to him. Now Stifler has gone to Tracy, and he's got a gun to his head, and he's rubbing his nipple. Did you just fall down the stairs? No. He says, shoot him. He's rubbing my titty. He goes, why are you doing that? He says, I'm just, I got a lot of nervous energy right now. Nothing there, I mean? You didn't find mm. that to be funny at all? Humorous? M- mainly because Stifler's character. I remember when the trailers for this movie came out. I remember looking at the poster and all that stuff. Like even right now, as I'm pulling it up, he's very prominently featured in all yeah. marketing for this movie. Yeah. And then I figured out, like, not only is he not in the movie that much, but his role is so inconsequential. They could have literally made the movie without any of him being in that. It could have been just a regular person. Robbed him and then sold the thing, and that was it. Mm, I don't agree. I think he delivers some lines later that are pretty good. But he's good in the parts that he does show up in. Yeah, he actually is kind of a senior. We'll get to it. Susie comes in, shoots a lamp, diffuses the situation. Let him go, or the next one goes right through your head. Drop the gun on the floor. No, no! It's brand new zebra wood, asshole! Give it to me! Here, 
fucking pussies, motherfuckers. What do you think a doormat is for? Now Stifler's been caught near the river. Poe boy has won, kill a couple of guys who lost the Mercedes. Offers five grand for the car. Now wow, we're getting, big spender. Now we're back to Stifler being transported now, and he's talking their ears off in the back of the car. He admits to the baseball card theft and the tasing. Wants to know if he shit his pants when he was tasered. Can we stop for cheese? I'm craving cheese. <laughs> Tracy can't get a hold of his wife. Stifler says, I've been, I've been meaning to ask Maze. Maze, would you do that? Are you quoting lines that you actually found were funny or lines that were just so ridiculously bad? I don't know. I take too many notes. Same. I'm trying to blow through it because I just want to get to the trivia of this movie. Stifler says, maybe she's banging another guy and doesn't want to answer the phone and ask for her number. Bruce says not to obsess about it. And Stifler asks if the woman uh, suffers from CCD disorder, cock craving disorder. He saw it on the news. Then he does the mirroring shit, which I really liked. That's the only thing, because I enjoy that too. I used to be that kid when I was growing up. So I always enjoy yeah, a very that good- That is not a shock at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I always enjoy a very a good like mimic, like you, yeah. you repeat what they're saying and trying to say it at the same time. Okay, I, I won't lie. I laugh every time he does it, but- it, and then there's something where what I, I love is a little throwaway line, but Tracy's talking to Bruce. He says he's trying to live rent free and he taps his head with the gun to which Stifler then says, don't tap your head with the gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> and then when he's trying to mirror him and he says duck season, he says rabbit season. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great little throwback. Oh man, what a great, what a great exchange. Then hey, Stifler, you, get, you get the reference. Rabbit season? Yeah, Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Uh, All right. Stifler gives us. Ah! <laughs> Stifler gives a knock-knock joke. Bruce wants to answer, but Tracy says not to do it because of their partnership. Finally says, who's there? He goes, why'd you do it? Why? To humiliate me? Orange. No, 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 no. Hell no, no, no. I refuse. No, no. And then Tracy says, orange who, damn it? Orange, you pissed your wife's taking it in the ass from another guy right now? That's a fun... Which, no, no, no. The joke itself isn't funny. The exchange, the energy no. between all three of them, that's funny, man. No, You're out of your no. mind. No, 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 it's not. It's not. Because the whole idea is that while everyone is silent, Tracy is silently arguing with himself to not. He's that curious to find out. Like, who's yeah. ever been that curious for? Oh, all right. Whatever. Yeah, that's the joke. This scene in the car, Bruce is basically not doing shit. Yeah. Right. He was supposed to. So it's just Stifler and Tracy riffing, and they're both really good at it. So it works. Yeah. Are they? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They no, really they, no they're fantastic it? together in this movie. They're really good in this movie together. And that's not scripted or anything. That's just Kevin Smith letting it ride. Bruce Willis was supposed to say things in that scene and refused to. We'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> they handcuff Stifler to the outside of the car and start driving away slowly to get him to talk about the card. Get out, you witty bitty bing bong freak! And the gun, he sold the baseball card for drugs, says it's Poe Boy. Now they roll up on Poe Boy's place. The guards outside saw the YouTube video. He clubs them with a collapsible baton. They walk in. Dijon mustard motherfuckers. <laughs> His baseball shrine room. Poe boy walks in. He threatens to destroy the card. Says they need to make a deal. He wants them to find his vehicle. And he'll give him the card back. Bruce gets his one good line. Who named you after a sandwich? Your mom or your dad? <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's a nice little that's it. throwaway line. <laughs> that's it for Bruce. That's really, yeah, that might be his only good line of this of the movie. Tracy pulls a gun, says, fuck this. Poe boy says, boys, and all these guys come out from all these open doors with guns. He says, you like that? We practiced that shit for an hour. I, I lost at that. They have a deal. Now they're in a garage somewhere. They roll up on a car booster, stop him dead in his tracks, and it's a child named Tommy. You just scratched my ride. What the hell are you doing, Tommy? Driving, bitch. Get out the car. Because I'm black? No, because you're 10. 11. Get out of the car. I was wearing my seatbelt. Get out of the car, you little repeat offender. Fuck. Now we need to know about the Mercedes that was stolen a couple of nights ago in the back of the mini mart in Bay Ridge. I ain't telling you shit. You can do shit, because I'm a minor. <laughs> Fuck you too, Professor X looking motherfucker. You are an angry young man. Yo, you're messing with my business, bitch. Whose car is this? Your mama's. What? You know, I will smack the black off you. You can't do anything to me. Tell us about the stolen Mercedes Benz. I'm not telling you nothing. You know, you're going to tell me something, or I'm going to... Go! I told you, be careful. (laughs) Paul, did you just punch a little child? 
There's things you don't know about me, Jim. I'll fuck a little kid up if you kick me in the dick. Yeah. This is the scene where Tracy Morgan says, I will smack the black off of you. And I was waiting. I was anticipating. I said, if they're worth their weight in gold, they'll have them say, and that won't be hard because there ain't that much in you because the kid is very light skinned. This was and, very anti Mexican, not anti black as a yeah, movie. Well, it's not anti black when black person does it to another black person. No, so. but, it, but you also have uh, a lot of white men writing this thing. Exactly. And, and that's and that's when I was like, never mind. Bruce grabs him, threatens to tell his mom. The kid gives up a name of who knows about the car. Mangold and Hunsucker are examining the dead bodies of the henchmen that Poe Boy had killed. They pinpoint that it's a Mexican gang. It's not really that interesting. Bruce and Tracy barge in on Fred Armisen's place. I was expecting more from Fred Armisen here. He disappointed me. Yeah, yeah. He I, I got I got excited when I saw him, and then I realized they weren't going to do anything with him. Bruce gets to be the bad guy this time. Tracy is the good cop, but he's just pretending to be RoboCop. Bruce takes the car, and they're being followed by Juan Diaz. He fires at him. We're in a reverse car chase scene in a shootout. Chase goes through a cemetery. They lead the Mexican guys to drive into an open grave. Diaz flies through the window, hits a gravestone. He is dead. It's kind of weird that he didn't have a seatbelt on throughout that whole very high-speed, dangerous chase. He was leaning outside the window shooting. You can do that with a seatbelt on? No, yeah. he wasn't. Yeah, he's le- he's got his arm Juan outside Diaz? the window shooting. He got yeah. his arm out the window. He didn't have his whole you think, body. You he think you're going to be secure? No, no one's going to be secure in that situation. you got to be able to move at any, at any chance. You know, you can just pull the seatbelt, right? You don't have to no, off. some cars, the brakes, if you hit the brakes and they got a brake or anything, that thing's going to lock up. Yeah. Well, you mean, can't risk it. You can't risk it. Or whatever. That, you're out of your mind on this. Risk it or take it. It's like you've never been in a I, shootout I, in a car chase I, before. I hate you, Maze. <laughs> I hate that Zach didn't hear it. I heard it. I just talked over it. <laughs> All right, he's dead. They go to a parking garage, check the trunk. A woman is tied up in there. She doesn't speak any English. Poe Boy is torturing the driver in a batting cage. Baseball! Ups the bounty to 20K. Now Bruce and Tracy take the woman to a Mexican restaurant to translate her story. Like what, dude? <laughs> she tells a long story in Spanish while Tracy eats chips. They need to talk somewhere in private, according to the translator. So, uh, Tracy eats chips, and then Bruce Willis looks at him, and Tracy just like, big, wide eye. Oh, but I'm eating chips. He doesn't say it, but that's <laughs> he did, what his he face did say. He did say they were for the table. Uh, Mangold and Hunsucker are going over ballistic info. Oh, did, did you guys sense the... The tension between the waiter and Gabriella. Oh, boy. The, I'm telling you, the waiter was all up in her, and their faces got closer and closer. I'm like, is he? Is he? And that's when, again, I was hoping for comedy where the waiter would not translate for them, but instead, like, hook up with Gabriella instead. Like, basically, like, tell her sweet nothings while he's telling them, yeah, yeah, she's, she, she said, he says, oh, we got to go somewhere private. I was like, oh, this dude. I was so ready for that, but no, no, they just made him into a Man, very awkward. You've been awkward horny attempt. for some sexual attention ever since Frank and Jean Claude. Zang! <laughs> Ballistic info from the guys who were killed. It matches Tracy's gun. The woman is the girlfriend of one of Mexico's biggest drug dealers. She paid to get across the border. The coyote sold her out, and she's been in a car for two days. Tracy goes home to grab some stuff. Bruce is telling the Mexican girl about his daughter getting married and her making life easy on him. He wants to give her the wedding she wants so he won't look like she, a jerk. She can't understand a single word. Yeah, she doesn't understand a word he's saying. Again, Tracy, I was waiting for a cutaway to Tracy in his house doing something crazy, but no, the whole scene purpose was Bruce Willis. Yeah, it's a little exposition. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tracy comes out with the bag that has the hidden nanny cam, wants him to press play. Bruce refuses to look at it. Tracy begs him, finally says yes, and it's Debbie with the man, but Bruce says there's nothing on there. Trying to save his partner from some anguish. Now they're at a motel waiting for the FBI to get to them. Bruce, still worried about his baseball card. Hunsucker and Mangold call Bruce. They say they found the gun of the murderer, and they know Tracy is a dirty cop. They want to meet him in 20 minutes at a bar, to which he goes and meets them. Wow, there's still 40 minutes left in this movie. Yep. They're asking about the gun, the death of Juan Diaz, that Tracy seems to be involved. Bruce threatens them if they ever try to play him against his partner again. Now Tracy and the woman wake up in a motel bed together. Tracy says nothing can happen because he's married, and neither knows what the other one is saying as they're both talking to each other in different languages. He thinks she wants to shower with him, then realizes it's just she wants to take a shower. He takes out the camera from the bear, sees his wife with the other man, closes the camera quickly, and is devastated. I submit to you that anyone working in law enforcement knows 
at least not. I'm gonna say they know Spanish. They know at least enough passable Spanish to get through that situation. Also, this woman apparently speaks so little English, doesn't even know hi and bye and things like that. Which I don't know if there's anyone in the world other she than she knew like, hi. She kept saying hi. Because he taught her that. Bruce is trying to find out when the Juan Diaz funeral is because he wants to break into the house and steal the car. In the middle of the night. Sorry for waking you up. Go back to sleep. Blah, 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 Goes blah. back to the motel. Tracy's been crying. He says he saw the nanny cam. Bruce says he's been where Tracy is. They then go into the bathroom. The girl has escaped. She left a note in Spanish with a rosary. Peligro is Puerto Rican for penguin. He says he knows that. <laughs> the rosary has a USB flash drive in it. They go to the motel front desk where the clerk is uh, getting a blowjob from a girl. 5.45 a.m. Why? Yeah, that's, that's when you're going to get it. Why not? I mean, he is the night shift guy, so it is the end of his night, but that just cracked me up. You got to blow, you got to blow. It just didn't add any humor to the to the situation. The information on the, on the drive is bank information of $750 million that he's trying to get his hands on. The note says she's sorry that she put them in danger. They're going to break into Poe Boy's place during the funeral. Stifler is in jail. I love this. With Darnell. Annoying another inmate. <laughs> yeah. He does the mirror trick again. Yeah. He has some fun facts about himself that he loves parkour and plays the oboe. The other inmate admits to knitting sweaters. <laughs> That's when Stifler's bail has been posted by the cops. He makes an ass to mouth joke about Tracy's wife. And Bruce says it isn't funny because she's actually cheating on him. And Stifler can't believe it. No. 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 Why are women like that? Ah, oh, I feel terrible now. How are you going to deal with this, Paul? Emotionally? I oh, don't know. I'm not sure. Hey, don't you give up on love, Paul. You hear me? Don't you give up on love. I okay. almost, almost gave up. Don't give up. No, I ain't giving up. Because love inspires. Yes, it do. You know? Yeah. And you're full of love. You'll be fine. Full of it. You are. Got a whole bag of it. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, you know something, man? David, what you just said to me, move me, man. It was heavy stuff. You know where I came up with that? Where? I came up with it when I was doing the thing that I love. Taking a shit in somebody's car? No. Yeah, cool. What? No. I was doing it when I was watching sunsets on Rockaway Beach. Oh, it's my favorite sunsets. thing in the world. It's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. I love sunsets. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yeah. You want to come with me sometime? Yes. Really? Seriously? Hey, 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 sit back. Stifler measures out the parkour and they do a special handshake with the Wakanda thing at the end. So maybe they invented that. <laughs> Whispers a secret. They laugh again. And then he starts hopping all over the house, gets to a tree branch, falls off the tree, hits his head on the ledge. There's no pulse. And Bruce says they got to throw him in the dumpster. <laughs> That's a funny little twist out of nowhere. You didn't like that? No, because I was like, wait, what was the point of his character? And I kept waiting in the shootout for him to like, come back to life. It turns out he wasn't dead. Pay it off somehow. I was like, nope, he's just dead. Until, spoiler alert, the post credit scene. Tracy boosts Bruce into the house. Bruce, Bruce? <laughs> Bruce? Oh boy, gets a call. They've allegedly got the girl. Tracy goes back to watching the nanny cam. Turns out Debbie found the camera, had her gay cousin film a fake scene. She says, fuck you, how can you not trust me? Tracy is screaming, that's her gay cousin. He's thrilled, I mean. That's her gay cousin. That's her gay cousin. That's a gay cousin. That's her gay cousin. That's a gay cousin. Po boy has the girl in the batting cage. Hunsucker and Mangle decide to baseball. Run. <laughs> she keeps flipping off Po boy before he can hit baseballs at her. Tracy calls him, says he has the crucifix. They're doing an exchange at the bridge, but Po boy stays behind with the best shooters. Now Hunsucker and Mangle are walking up on the house. Tracy shoots a guy who's about to shoot them. Then gunfire comes from inside the house, and Hunsucker is hit in the shoulder. Bruce comes out to try to save them. Mangold runs over, calls for backup. Bruce and Tracy break back in. Tracy kills a guard. Bruce kills a guard. Tracy almost gets killed, fights a guy in a baseball room. Bruce kills a couple of guys. Tracy gets shot but kills a guy. And that's when Diaz says to him, I can hear you guys whispering, sweet nothings. You better not be blowing each other in my house. Because Tracy replies, we're not, you prick. No. Bobo Boy has a shotgun taped to the girl's neck. 
After arguing about when to shoot, Bruce pops him in the forehead on one. Question here. Yeah. Is it on three, one, two, three, then shoot, or is it one, two, and then shoot on three? No, it's one, two, three, and then you shoot. One, two, three, shoot. That's what it is, because rock, paper, scissors should be one, two, three, shoot. So why is it on three, then? Wouldn't it be on four? No, because you never say four. On shoot. That's a little on the nose if you're shooting a gun. But then you don't know what number to count to. Right, exactly. Well, they still count it to one and then shot. And you're just waiting to hear you shoot. <laughs> well, yeah, you that's that's got the drop on him with me. You don't understand that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Was he going to dodge if, if they got in the three? <laughs> you never know. That's why you do it. Han Sucker, headed to the hospital. The girl's in safe custody. She kisses Tracy and goes away. <laughs> Captain says Mangold said they backed up the detectives on their investigation. Uh, he's happy with them. Bruce has checked Diaz's body for the card. Turns out Tracy shot him in the chest right through the card, which was in his pocket, and the card is ruined. Tracy's crying and apologizing, and now we cut to the wedding of Bruce's daughter. Bruce and his ex are dancing. She asks him to give away the daughter with the stepdad, Roy. Tracy asks the bartender if he's got any Mad Dog 2020. That seemed racist. That's, that's, what, that's what black people drink. Did you know that, Maze? <laughs> The ex threatens him and his balls if he doesn't give him away with the stepdad. Tracy and his wife have reconciled at the wedding. About- the priest asks who gives his bride away. Bruce and Roy both start to stand up, but Tracy, sitting behind Roy, pulls his gun, points it into his kidneys, and says, tells him to sit down. Bruce gives her away. Tracy smiles at her. If I'm, if I'm Roy, I call the blow. I'm ready to die like that. First of all, you're a cop and you're going to shoot me one. At a wedding... In front of, like, hundreds of people. What a low-reward, high-risk stance to take. Nah, man. I'm definitely like, go ahead and shoot me. Go ahead and shoot me. I want you and that prick to lose your badges, go to jail, get pounded in the ass. It would be worth it. Maze, it's a little curious how into this is not how that would go Amin is with this movie. When I don't feel like we've done that with really any... I mean, we didn't do that with Battlefield Earth. Do you want lunch? <laughs> Raw credits and stuff in the credits corner. Here's noise from a body bag. It's a knock knock joke. It says, "Open the fucking bag, bitch." It's Stifler. He's alive. Only, I don't know the, if they were setting up a sequel. What, like I don't know what that he, was. He starts with the the mirroring thing because yeah. she's on the phone. That's when I was like, uh-huh. like as a, a well, that was chuckle. too much. Yeah, because I mean, because he's dead, man. We lost over it a bit, but I did mostly enjoy the Pollock Brody banter about. Boots. There's a long running joke about boots. You like that? I thought it was fine. I thought Brody was doing most of the heavy lifting. I thought Kevin Pollock was getting a check. Kevin but Pollock really mailed it in. Man. Really mailed it in. It was surprising. Yeah, he and Bruce Willis. All right, let's get the who trivia. Is Adam Brody. First of all, is he, is he related to Adrian Brody? No. Great question. Okay. All right. Second of all, what has he been in other than than this? Basically, the OC, Mr. And Mrs. Smith. He had a peripheral career as a bit player that fell apart so here's the trivia you wanted to know where the pun name came from i mean when kevin smith found out the studio was going to lock in the title of a couple of cops so they could run the trailer behind sherlock holmes in 2009 on christmas weekend he told a producer god that title is going to feel like such a fucking cop out the producer replied we should just call the movie that that's how i got the name cop out now let's get to the kevin smith bruce willis feud they did not get along on set. Reports surfaced that Willis disliked Smith's direction, felt he didn't interact enough with the cast, and disagreed with Smith's use of marijuana. Kevin Smith admitted in an interview that heavy marijuana smoking had become an integral part of his work ethic after watching Seth Rogen use marijuana as a tool to become more creative and productive on Zack and Mary Make a Porno, saying... The moment I start smoking, I start working. That way, no one could ever take it away from you. Smith counterclaimed that working with Willis was soul-crushing, so that he uh, refused to listen to direction, was occasionally combative, and generally unpleasant on and off set. On one occasion, Bruce Willis said to Kevin Smith, I'm Bruce Willis. I've been Bruce Willis successfully for 25 years. How long have you been silent Bob, motherfucker? That's a great fucking line. It would have been the funniest <laughs> line in the whole goddamn movie. Kevin Smith described Bruce Willis the unhappiest, most bitter, and meanest emo bitch I've ever met at any job I've held down and a fucking dick. Bruce Willis openly refused to stand on his lighting mark in outdoor scenes. Then he would ignore Kevin Smith's orders during the film and walk off to a catering table constantly. 
Kevin Smith credits Tracy Morgan for getting him through the shoot by being funny and good natured. He said that he's a fucking dream. Tracy Morgan, I would lay down in traffic for. Were it not for Tracy, I would have either killed myself or someone else in the making of Cop Out. He said that on WTF with Mark Marin in 2011. After Maybe one, Bruce Willis is trying to save us from this movie. <laughs> after one stressful time working with Bruce Willis, Kevin Smith retired to his trailer and punched three holes in the bathroom wall, which his assistant called Die Hard 1, Die Hard 2, and Die Hard 3. That assistant's trying to get a job. <laughs> yes and also sounds like bruce willis is really the emo bitch here huh yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go punch my trailer wall never meet your heroes kids no according to kevin smith bruce willis was often unable to improvise with tracy morgan he seemed shell-shocked by how fast tracy could make up dialogue and be funny tracy was so fun and bruce was like what is he talking about? He started trying to ad lib, says Smith, and he'd look out the window and be like, Is that Connie Chung out there? I think that's Maury Povich. He's naming these names, and you're like, Does he have an old TV guide under the table? Why is he bringing these names up? Is that um, Connie Chung would actually, again, be a funny line. Bruce supposedly threatened to punch Kevin Smith during a break but denies it during a scene shot in front of a green screen. Bruce lectured Kevin Smith and his crew on their choice of camera lens. Willis then lashed out at Smith for not knowing the proper specifications for a camera's lens size. That's really some baller shit. (laughs) Bruce is like, you got me in 50 millimeter? I want an 85. And now let's get to the uh, word we cannot escape on this show. Mays, take it away. In response to the critical drubbing of his 2010 film Cop Out, Smith lashed out at the community of film critics on his Twitter account saying, Writing a nasty review for Cop Out is akin to bullying a retarded kid. All you've done is make fun of something that wasn't doing you any harm and wanted only to give some cats some fun laughs. That's a terrible way of spinning that. A little jive talk there at the end? Oh, man. I was trying to give the cat some laughs. Lost a lot of respect for Kevin Smith right there, man. You lost a lot? Yeah. And oddly enough, not because of the use of the R word. <laughs> No, you like that. <laughs> Kept that streak going for us. We have a Tony Medley. Yes, we do. Jesus Christ. Tony, please. <laughs> Tony Medley. Please, Tony. As, don't. Please, Tony. <laughs> as a, as a critic. You. As a critic. Nothing ticks me off more than lame-brained, inane, poorly made, idiotic movies. Usually, it's pretty easy for me to write reviews devastating them. For some reason, even though this is as lame brain, inane, poorly made, and idiotic as any, I've had difficulty actually setting myself to write a critique. But time it is a waste, and I have to get this out before this movie dies the quick death it deserves. This is apparently a vehicle for Tracy Morgan to try out his comedy. Bad idea for Tracy, because if this is an example of Morgan's talent, he's never going to make it past New Haven. I don't get that. What does that mean? What is that reference? I don't know. Morgan and Bruce Willis play cop partners in a movie they couldn't have made more hackneyed than if they were actually trying. Forgetting for the nonce the theme, mixed race cop buddies who act like a spoiled married couple, the first scenes show Morgan emulating lots of other action movies like the Die Hard series and the Lethal Weapon series while interrogating a bad guy. If you survive sitting through this episode, you know you're in for a long 107 minutes, and it doesn't get any better. In fact, it gets worse! Although you wouldn't think that possible. This movie has nothing. There's no plot. Something about an old baseball card Willis needs to sell to finance his daughter's wedding. And it's stolen, so he and Morgan go out to try to find the miscreant. Willis' presence in this movie is a mystery. He's apparently there to play Abbott to Morgan's Costello. But Bruce is no Abbott and Morgan is no Costello. Which doesn't say much because I really didn't find Bud and Lou that funny either. (laughs) Except for who's on first and the Mutter Fodder sequel. (laughs) Off of this outing, Bruce would never have been considered for Moonlighting, the series that changed him from a bartender to a movie star. Willis commenting on the movie said, This is a big romp. Crazy. It's high comedy. Some of the most outrageous things I've ever seen. Warner Brothers gave us an R rating, so we went to town on that. Well, sorry, Bruce, but Warner Brothers doesn't give ratings. The Motion Picture Association of America does. And it's disappointing that after three decades in the industry, Willis shows such little appreciation for what high comedy is. The idea is that one gains knowledge and taste with age and experience. A bartender does, should an actor. (laughs) The only thing I can say about this movie is that occasionally there are some Spanish-speaking people and the subtitles are excellent. Too bad they're translating the script by Rob and Mark Cullen. This is worse than bad. Morgan is a foul-mouthed comic wannabe, so that lets 
it out for children. The story, script, dialogue, and directing are so awful it's an insult to the audience's intelligence. But what's to be expected from director Kevin Smith, who counts among his meager credits the deplorable Zack and Mary make a porno? <laughs> Frankly, I've been an admirer of Willis. This is very disappointing. I mean, what do you think he gave that out of 10? I'm going to go with three. Two, actually. Wow. Two out of 10. Harsh. Um, all right. Golden very Dumpster disa- time. Very, very disappointed Tony Medley, man. That's like the, the worst criticism he can give you. Yeah, the drive-by <laughs> on Abbott and Costello, though, was For yeah, real. Yeah, Jesus. fantastic. On the body's not even cold. Except for that who's on first bit. <laughs> They're trash. Hello, mother. Hello, fada. <laughs> Golden Dumpster nominees, Tracy Morgan carrying the movie with his improv sean william scott for his three or four scenes or whatever Susie coming in real hot as Susie, adam brody or kevin pot smoking smith <laughs> in his trailer punching ways <laughs> i mean what's your golden dumpster i'm gonna give it to tracy morgan but not for carrying the movie but for being every bit as annoyingly tracy morgan as he always is wow Maze? I'm Tracy Morgan, son. I don't like it's a lisp. Yeah, Zach, you got a point there. It's extremely short, but I have to give it to Susie. Susie came in and crushed it. Stifler, if he had had maybe two more scenes, would have done it for me. Unless he did the mirror thing in those two more scenes, because that's all he's got. I'm going off the board. I'm going monocle wearing motherfucker. That gets me every time. I love that part. Zach, uh, I appreciate yeah. you know what real humor looks like. All right, I mean, Morgan's like a Muppet. That's what he's like. I mean, Fober file eyebrows, and then his face is just way too big. Have you ever noticed that? That's that's. He's got a, what can he do about that? I guess he could lose some weight, but yeah, he's got a big face. You know who gets a golden dumpster? Huh. The truck driver. I'm gonna give this a foe. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All of a sudden, it means pro Walmart. <laughs> rollback. <laughs> All about the rollback. What did you give it? You gave it a file? Probe. Okay. The joke yeah. of me was you, w- you wish you had rolled back over the body. But, I mean, that's why. <laughs> I, I lay it out for you to play it out. Steve right? <laughs> <laughs> Nash doesn't dunk. He throws it to other guys. <laughs> Maze, over file. Okay. When I saw this movie back in the early 2010s or whatever, it was fine. I, I'm cool with Tracy Morgan. I don't hate Tracy Morgan like I mean, and this is a lot of Tracy Morgan. It was fucking long as shit, though. It was so long. They could cut a good 20 minutes off this movie and be pretty If they cut good. Sean William Scott out of the movie if they cut the night manager at the motel cut sean williams scott out of this kevin, movie kevin pollock and adam brody on the docks where they have the conversation about yeah. the booth that's a straight like 25 30 minutes right there that you, i just gave you no but sean williams scott you can't have this movie without sean williams scott yes you can no this year it would be worse off in my opinion it would be tougher to watch but yeah never have i ever appreciated the length of credits until cinephobe that is a nice man yeah because it knocks off five to ten minutes every time it's a blessing oh we finished 10 minutes early because of the credits uh, yeah i was gonna say you sitting there watching the credits too <laughs> <laughs> i was just fast forward through them just to see if there's any oh, any oh let me help you all out everybody listeners you guys there's a website it's called mediastinger.com you enter the name of the movie It'll tell you whether to stay after the credits. It'll tell you if the scene is in the middle of the credits or at the end of the credits. It'll tell you if it's just animation or if there's an actual scene, everything. So all those Marvel movies that had like multiple hidden scenes in the credits, always knew all about them because of good old media stinger. But it's nothing like, all right, so they need some shawarma. Who cares? This movie is too long. And it really suffered from having just watched Coffee and Cream. This felt way too similar to Coffee and Cream. And it didn't blow Coffee and Cream away. And I already phobed Coffee and Cream, so phobed this movie too. It wasn't even close to Coffee and Cream. It wasn't even close. Like, Coffee and Cream, like I said, once they hit the steel mill, at least there's witty, funny dialogue in there. 
This thing had none of that at, at any point. There was also a shitload of Guillermo that could have been cut. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I think, yeah, you don't cut Scarface. Jumping, Scott. You got to. Scarface. Yeah. Got to cut Scarface. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a compelling bad guy. It's not a compelling story. The script is terrible. The script is really awful. But the monocle wearing motherfucker gets me every time. I got to be honest. I didn't remember a good like 50% of this movie. Like anything after the scene where Susie, they go to Susie's house, right? I really didn't remember much of that. I don't remember the motel stuff. I don't remember a lot. Like, I don't even really remember the shootout. The only part that I really got deja vu at was the part where Tracy is imitating his mother. My son is a genius. My son, I remember that from the trailer. And I was like, oh, yeah. And that's just a complete throwaway scene. The part from the trailer that I remember was, King Kong ain't got nothing on me. Tracy Morgan has a police officer in cop out. Because of the monocle wearing motherfucker, I'll always turn it on just to see where it is. Just because you no. own a monocle. No, 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 no. No. You see what Zach's doing. Zach didn't like this movie, but he's searching for the one positive scene that he did like to build a fictitious argument for him to give a file on it. Go ahead. Wow, but, I didn't you, you know, you know, here's want, the thing I mean. Because you want to irritate me. me. No, I, I like no, 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 no. Okay. I like to do a little that, misdirection with the audience. Yeah, okay. I like to do a little misdirection with the audience. So I'll give you one direction, get the other direction. I was gonna go back to the other direction. Or was yeah. I? Who's yeah, to I, say? You may you maybe ruined it. Yes, you maybe I ruined did. that moment. So maybe yes. I'll phobe it, but I'm gonna file it. Is it a cop out? I don't know. Next time we make love. You introduce me to Jade.